weapon, certainly. But spawning in the top right hand side of the map, it is from Clan Macaco, Jim Rising. And that, of course, means that in the bottom left side, we're going to take a look at the main base of the Zerg that's representing Team Axon. It is a champ. Very, very cool. It's been a very long day, Roddy. So yeah. See this uh, CBC to end it all. Hopefully it's, uh, it's fireworks. Hopefully it's a good one. <laughs> you want to know something funny? While we yeah. were in this two minute break, my mom called me and it's literally 1 a.m. in the Netherlands or well, it's 30 oh. minutes past midnight. And that's kind of scary, right? I, feel it like, is, yeah. I was like, oh my God, is this an emergency? And I'm like, hello? Mm -hmm. And she's like, hey, my dad just told me that you haven't been streaming in two days. Are you okay? <laughs> 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 I'm like, yes, mom, I've been casting over the Dreamer channel. She's like, oh, on a different channel. I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, we were worried because we haven't seen you live in two days. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's <laughs> so like, nice. Yeah, I mean, it is very nice. But perhaps also a sign that I stream too much if my parents are worried if I'm not live for two days. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose so. Yeah. So she watches your stream often then, huh? Uh, mostly just to stop by. Like, she doesn't really understand StarCraft. But mm. it's nice for the mom, I guess, to tune in and see that her son is alive and playing video games. <laughs> This is true. This is true. How nice of her. Yeah, that's so cool to call you at 1 a.m. for that. Yeah. You should have been like, don't call me at 1 a.m. next time, mom. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I'd be concerned. I'd be like, what happened, mom? You know, I know. I'm like, hello. <laughs> you haven't been live. <laughs> I was like, I have. <laughs> I really have I'm watching a lot of video games. All right, guys, ZVZ here between Jim Rising. I mean, I think you said it best, uh, Katz. It's hard to be confident or believe in Jim Rising when he doesn't believe himself. But at the end of the day, it's just a single best of three ZVZ. And I do feel that crazy things could happen. And Jim does still have a couple of tricky builds up his sleeve. Let's see if he does something wild here in game one. He does, he does. So we'll see. I think Jim has had a love-hate relationship with Mutalisks. So we might see some mutas, uh, not your most standard CVC. And, uh, you know, if it's difficult to play against an underdog muta player because it puts you in a position where to really punish the muta, you have to all in. And usually the player that has the advantage, like that thinks that they have an advantage, doesn't want to all in, right? So, um, so I would like to see mutas from Jim Rising and see maybe if he can get away with that if Cham won't punish him too hard. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting Champ to have a very safe and conservative approach to this best of three. And we were talking about Lambo being the favorite earlier today when he went up in his best of three against Sword of. Even though Lambo still took some risks for sure, I yeah. don't expect Champ to take all too many risks. Just be crazy and I think, quite frankly, very unnecessary. Yeah, I, and I mean, that is the mark of a very, very good uh, player is when you are the favorite and you're still willing to take risks right because you understand that uh, if if not maybe you wouldn't be the favorite right if you were predictable enough that your opponent can just uh can just read what you're doing and, and abuse it so i remember uh one time i was playing against jadong i went for a three hatch before pool i thought okay i'm gonna just draw an up and then he showed up with a bunch of links and i was like okay i guess i'm dead <laughs> so that was, you know, it was a pretty short story. Like the thought was there. I was like, you know, this guy's never gonna attack into me because why would Jadon attack into me, right? Like he's gonna win like ten minutes mm -hmm. down the line anyway. But nope, he just killed me right away. And that's kind of the mentality that we saw from Lambo. I'm not sure if Cham would be willing to replicate um, because I don't think that Cham is yeah. as good as Lambo, right? That is a four-minute spire, by the way, on the side of Cham. That's so crazy. Okay. <laughs> a four-minute spire against a two-base Zerg. I mean, yeah. we're talking about how the favorite shouldn't take too many risks and stuff. And here That's we've got Cham. Cham could be in trouble, by the way, because he I think be. he's anticipating Jim Rising to go for a two-base spire. And he's like, I'm just going to do your two-base spire yeah. with a three-base spire. Instead, Jim is going to attack with Roaches and plus one. Uh, upset alert, perhaps? Perhaps. I mean, for this first game, it's definitely looking pretty good for Jim. I mean, this is... Kind of what I was hoping Jim would do, and that Cham wouldn't do what Jim is doing, but Jim is doing it. <laughs> it's way too late for me to understand it, but I think I get what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, well, Jam is uh, starting to get a little bit concerned, and now he sees maybe the roaches, or he at least saw the queens moving out, so he knows what's happening. I mean, this fire is so quick, though, that it may actually still just finish up way in time. And it's actually Jim who, by the looks of it, is not attacking yet. I mean, yeah. he's sending the slow roaches to the other side of the map now. I think the best thing that Jim Rising can hope for is maybe a hatchery kill, but he's not going to get a whole lot more than that. Yeah, I mean, Cham did add two spines somewhere. Um, he cancelled they... them in the natural oh. because he's like, this is so late. My Mudos are going to take care of this. Yeah, but uh, I mean, this might still do damage from Jim Rising. I would really love to see him maybe transition into something like Burrow Roaches after. Because, yeah, the Mudos are eventually going to clear everything out, but it's going to take him a while. Roaches are yeah. very durable against uh, a Muta. So now Cham is going to have to evacuate his third. I love this from Jim Rising, not really stopping. At the third, he needs to do crucial damage. He needs to kill a lot more, and he knows it, and he's going for the natural. I like this. He is going to drop a Zenitus behind all of this, which is ambitious because he doesn't have that many queens. But yeah, I do like how decisive Jim Rising is being here. And I bet that Chem is kicking himself for canceling those spines that he was building earlier. This is where the drones are going to fall. The big question is how many. So far, it's eight. Obviously, Jim Rising needs quite a bit more than this, but he's going to get more. I mean, the Roaches are not wasting any shots on other units because they can't attack the Mudos anyway. Now, a Nidus is going up in the front, and Champ's supply is plummeting. Yeah, the big problem, like you said, is there's not enough uh, Queens, potentially. But like you said, I mean, the supply is really telling the story here. These Mudos are going to take too long to clear the drones. And uh, I think we have an upset here in the making, at least for the first game. There's not that many Roach reinforcements. And there was a lot of wasted fire onto the hatchery. You see that the hatchery took damage. Those, sh those should be drones. dead drones instead. If the spores <laughs> go up, it's lights out. Yeah, I mean, even if just two spore crawlers go up, it's lights out. Oh, and the Mudos are going to have to choose. They don't want to yeah. keep the remaining drones safe. If the answer is yes, that's it. that obviously yeah. means that the spore crawlers will finish up. And that means the natural and the third are both compromised. And it's, I mean, it's a one base, uh, one base, five drone champ. That's a miracle I don't believe in either, but I guess, yeah, I guess I was wrong to, to doubt miracles. Because we have one in the making. We've had a miracle on ice, now we've got the miracle on 2k atmospheres. How do, what the hell was that game? We've got a four minute lair, or a four minute spire pretty much, of three bases, against a Zurich that was on two bases for a long time, makes the plus one roach attack. Jem is like, oh no, that could be tricky, I'm gonna build spines, and then he's like, Nah, I don't need any spine crawlers here. I'm totally fine because he's going up to three bases or something. He cancels the spines. The roaches show up. He's like, whoa, that's actually a lot of roaches. It's like, yeah, the guy who didn't build the spire and is not building meadows does have a lot of roaches. And he's like, well, yeah, I'm going to try to build spines again. But then it was too late. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we were talking about it before. I thought that if the roles were reversed, you know, Jim could maybe get away with Muta because, yeah. because Cham might not punish. But instead it was Jim... Punishing, he was kind of punishing blindly, and it's one of those things where you you kind of doubt yourself playing against Jim because he really can't do anything. Like it could have been an earlier attack, it could have been Ling Nidos, it could have been just just a Nidos, in which case mm -hmm. maybe the spines don't help Cham too much. But it was kind of perfect. I mean, it was just about the perfect counter to what Cham was doing. It absolutely was, but. Also, why is Chem playing this strategy? Like, we're kind of giving him a lot of props, and that's because Chem deserves these props. He's mm -hmm. had good runs in the past in the WCS circuit events before the e ESL Pro Tour became, or when WCS used to be WCS and then it became the ESL Pro Tour. We had the big circuit events. Chem did well, man. He's made like six top 16 in the past. I think he had a top eight even top eight, yeah. in Dream Act Tour. Two top eights, I think, yeah. Yeah, in Dream Act Tour, I think, the one that Showtime won. In the final against Nurture, I think that Cham had a great run in that event. Kiev in 20... I mean, the year is starting to blend together. I think Kiev 2019, Cham had a great appearance too. He doesn't need to take this kind of risk in such an important match. Because if he loses here, the DreamHack SE2 Masters Latin America is over for him. That obviously means no season finals and means no chance to prove yourself against the heavy hitters of this region in the names of Kalazur and Special. And you know that would hurt Cham. I mean, Cham is the kind of player that plays almost as many online cups as Bly, right? Like he's yeah. he's really in all of them. He is always at the top of the OSC circuit just because he really lives and breathes this game. And to not make it in the in the you know in in a region that he should more or less take for granted, it would be gigantic. So uh, mm -hmm. good for Jim, but this is worrisome for Cham. It's very worrisome. Let's see if this man can turn it around. He's down on one. 
playing these games from South Korea, representing Exxon, it is Jem. And in the bottom right hand side, playing for Macaco, it is Jim Rising. Hi, Mito. He has a cool tattoo as well. Jim? Yeah. He has a sleeve. Oh. A little Some red sleeve? in there too. Mm, kind of. Let Todd's sleeve is is really cool. Jim's is just cool, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> there is level of coolness to the tattoo game. Yeah, yeah, I mean the artist, you know, like Let Todd's sleeve, the artist, they really put in a lot of work. Jim's mm -hmm. It, it looks like they put in some work and like, you Mate. know, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, you can I'm going to stop but you here. Shit you talk tattoos? Say. You can't shit talk tattoos, really. I mean, I'm saying it's no, good. I'm saying, it's I would all... get Jim's tattoo, okay? okay? But I would be really happy With if I got Todd's tattoo, tattoo <laughs> instead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Oh, oh. Okay. Depends how the stream goes. Like, if you get a bunch of tier 3 subs, you're going to get Tots there too. But if it's mostly Twitch Primes, you're going to go for gyms. Is, is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, more or less. I think I think, I think that's what I'm saying. Okay. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think that's fair. Also, I don't know. I don't know. What, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm not going to talk about, you know, like, whether French artists are better than oh. Mexican artists or worse. Maybe it's just a difficult, uh, different, like, um, well, approach to tattoos. No? Well, Todd is, uh, as you know, Todd is a very serious man about things that he cares about. And obviously a tattoo mm. is something you should think, you know, deeply yeah. and long about. But uh, Johan has been browsing Instagram pages left and right and has yeah. been contacting tattoo artists that don't just live in France right. or Germany. But I think he's even been traveling to Spain and England to get some of his tattoos. So he went all over Europe to make sure that he got exactly what he was looking for. Yeah, exactly. At some point, I actually inquired and he linked me a couple of Instagrams of the mm -hmm. two artists to check out. So, so yeah, definitely. Whereas Jim probably, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say that he, you know, just went out and found the first tattoo artist that he could find. He probably did some research, but probably not as much as, much as thought is what I'm saying. No. To be fair, when I got my first tattoo made, I had no idea what I was doing. I was just went, went to the first place that I know someone in America got a tattoo. And I was like, they got to be good, right? Because the person that I knew in America went here. So I'm just going to go here too. And I feel like in the end, they maybe could have done a bit better. But I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, a man who knows what he's doing is Cham as he starts his plus one attack for the Roaches. And Jim, though, mm. starting the plus one melee. It's feisty, right? Plus one melee, two base opener. So he's making it look like he's doing the same thing as the previous game. As Cham is going to apply some pressure on the Evolution Chambers here. I think this is a tiny bit of an overreaction on the side yes, of Jim Rising. Absolutely. But yeah. yeah, but I mean, pressure. He's up 1-0. Can't truly blame him. Yeah, I mean, that's where you want to really keep an eye on the Overlord and see if there's reinforcements. If there's reinforcements, sure, go for it. But if there yeah. isn't, I mean, that's those links are never going to break through that uh, yes. evil chamber i kind of wonder why we're still building two ro oh this is is he really selling this he's like oh it's roaches like it. again he's putting the roach in the front but he's actually gonna drop a spire isn't he yes of course yeah oh, this he's is... definitely gonna drop a spire i like hey it. this is big brain gaming by jim rising it really is but he's still on just two bases so it's not gonna be like, he really yeah, needs but... to find a lot of damage yeah but he yeah, hasn't but... gone down no, it's not about the spy. Look at the amount of zerglings he's making, though. He's going to go for a plus one zergling swell. Like, this is, this, none of this makes any sense. Chem is yes. going to be really <laughs> surprised by what he's going up against. Chem is going to be forced to build a couple of safety roaches, but even three or four roaches are not going to keep you safe against 40 zerglings with plus one. Yeah, I mean, good for Cham that he will have his own plus one, so those roaches are going to be one-shotting or two-shotting the links. There's a spine mm -hmm. also coming up. And that's why the spire coming coming down, and it has come down now, is kind of important because that's the follow-up, right? Like it's the one-two punch that you're looking for. And uh, I'm not sure if Jim is waiting too long. Do you think he is? I mean, Cham has been I, making non-stop roaches. Yeah, exactly. Like Cham is getting ready for the roach all in, but then instead it's a zerg all in, and he's like, oh, a zergling all in. And he's like, oh, well, I've been building roaches anyway, which is kind of what I need to deal with this. But we'll see. Maybe these plus one links can get an awesome surround or anything. Like, this is a proper NA tactic. But let's not forget that we do still have the Spire going up behind all of this. If I was Jim Rising, I'd just go for the hatchery. I don't know if you yes. can get that right. 
You think he yeah, can for get sure. it? Oh my god, that's well, a massive! If he gets the hand tree, he can just go home and then he can play the Spire game. Yeah, and he can also get us around on this road just, oh. just exactly like this. Well done from Jim Rising here. He's gonna get both of the things that he was looking for as Cham is forced to defend. Could, be, could we be seeing one of the biggest upsets in Latin American history? I mean, it's not unlikely. It's looking really good now for Jim Rising, I think. Like, sure, he's down 32 supply, he's down 11 workers, but he's got nine Mudas on the way against a Zerg player with no Spore Crawlers and only five Queens. Like, this is normally, a, a, it's at least a dream scenario to make a proper game out of it, right? And at this yes. point, every Zerg player hates playing against Mudas. If you don't have an Infestation Pit, if you don't have Spore Crawlers everywhere, and you don't have a bunch of Hydras out already, I think that Jim can find a lot of damage in the upcoming two, three minutes of Romanticide. Yeah, and look at how many Roaches Cham has been making, right? Because he's still worried about the ground attack. And this is exactly the one-two punch that I was talking about. There's not going to be a spore at that third. It's going to be very difficult to situate nice. it. If Jim can find those those queens, it could be lights out. Instead, Cham is forced to move out with his Roaches just to offer us a sacrifice so that Jim won't take more than that. Yeah, but look he's going to lose course. a lot of drones, plus one flyer attacks is on the way. Like, I don't think Jem is going to die here, but he's taking a lot of damage. He's now down economically, and these roaches, the only thing they can really do is buy time, right? They can't do anything else. Yeah, I mean, Jim's uh, creep spread is going to work against them, but really, he didn't creep spread that much. So good job, I guess, on that front, as these roaches are going to get taken down right. on the way to his base. They don't even have speed yet. They're not going to find nearly as much damage. As Jim found, obviously, that was a killing blow. The Lynx don't really even need to engage here. They could just be tucked in inside his natural base and let the Muta do all the work. But this He's is good enough as everything. well. Yeah, but this is like even works out in a big way for Jim, right? Because now he can start sp spamming Zerglings again and you can force out even more Roaches from Jam. Because Jam cannot just defend with a couple of Queens because then the Queens get surrounded by the Lynx. I actually think it's happening. What the hell is this? Jim Rising is going to 2-0 Jam in an elimination match? He very well could. I would have also liked something like a Roach switch on the side of Jim, but he's continuing to commit to Muta and Ling. He, I don't see a Baneling nest either, but okay. if he's gonna be, if he's gonna go, go go for the economy like this, I mean, he's gonna have to run into Cham, and that's where it, that's where Cham could maybe stabilize. If Jim doesn't get something like Banelings to kind of throw at Cham and reset his economy constantly, or Roaches to deal a devastating killing blow, Mutas mm -hmm. are not killer units. So, so Jim still has a little bit of work to do, but it's looking good, looking great. Yeah, he absolutely has some work to do. I kind of wish he would have used the links there because it was just four queens and a spore crawler. The roaches were out of position and just having 10 links with plus one working on those queens, all those queens would have fell like domino stones. Instead, Jim gives Cham a little bit of time, but this muta count is growing at a very rapid pace. We're looking at 17 mutalis cats. Yeah, and again, Jim is so difficult to predict, right? Like I was saying, like committing to Muta is one of those ways to to kind of potentially throw the game, but instead it's making it more difficult for Champ, who is not really over committing to Spores. Not really, like he's kind of spreading himself thin because he, he wants to defend against so many different potential things. And you never know which one Jim's gonna do. <laughs> Uh, I mean, the first Hydras are making their way onto the battlefield. I'm sure that Cham is really feeling the pressure. Zorgling is going to try to get lucky. Surround the Spore Crawler. They won't get it. A free Hydra there for Jim Rising. Every pickoff counts. I mean, Cham is down seven workers against Jim Rising at this point. And these Mudas, I'd love to see the Mudas go into the main. Like, what are two Spore Crawlers going to do against 18 Mudas with plus one? Instead, he's going to go for the Queens and the Hydras. I think it's happening, Cats. It's happening, it's happening, it's happening. I mean, he's killing queens. He basically has enough Muta to one-shot those. The Hydras oh. are not enough. I would still love to see a Baneling Nest added, just in case the Hydra get get plentiful enough in numbers to where they deflect the Mutas. But I mean, this is good enough. If Cham continues to fight with this small numbers of units, Jim can continue to trade well. It's going to be very difficult to hold this third from Cham. Yeah, 15 drones have gone down, a few more are gonna fall. Wow. The only thing we wa don't want to do is fight above two spore crawlers. I think we can even just fight the hydras above one spore crawler. Jem is gonna desperately try to counterattack one more time with his plus one roaches, but this has to be by far and away the biggest upset of two days of the Dream Max Stalker 2 Mass this summer. Jem, the man in Korea at this point, is gonna get eliminated by Jim Rising, the man who's in the gym all the time? Flexing his <laughs> full sleeve tattoo? Yeah, I'm not sure, man. Ah, 
it i mean yeah i want to say yes right like i mean this game looks like yes it's just so difficult to believe that cham is actually gonna lose this one and uh and i mean he has a lurker now so banelings are being morphed but there is no baneling speed and now he's getting banelings when the lurkers are gonna be already out so if cham can stabilize and drag this game out Maybe he can slowly crawl to take Slow. a fourth base and so on and so forth. His Bailings are looking for connections and they're going to find them. Nine more workers going down. Well, of course, they're going to find them. Wow. Well, maybe a few more. <laughs> Make it 14. Everything working out now for Jim Rising as he's morphing 14 additional Bailings in the center. He went up to four bases. 32 worker advantage. I truly cannot believe it. Plus two melee is done. Plus two flyer attacks is done. I think this is it, man. Yeah, and this is where I would be fuming if I was playing Jim because it's like he's running in banelings without speed against lurkers. <laughs> At this point, now please start making more Muta, right? Like this, he was making Muta when it when it was like weird to make Muta to me at least. And now that, that it would be perfect to make Muta because there's investment in the lurkers, he's going back into banelings. But it's working out. I mean, it's, you know, like that's, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And uh, I mean, a fungal not even ready here, almost ready, however. Jim hesitating here, probably getting some jitters as well. Yeah, of course. Jim probably can't even believe it. I don't think he expected this at any moment. Uh, a massive fungal does land on all these Mutas, but Cham has lost the majority of his drones. He's going to end up losing a few more here. Jim Rising does not respect these four crawlers anymore. And why the hell should he? More Banelings rolling in. And Beautiful. that's going to do it. it. What the hell? Wow. What an upset.